Hi, my name is Ryan Arp, and I'm an archaeologist with Environmental Planning Group based in Phoenix, Arizona. As I said, I'm an archaeologist at Environmental Planning Group, a Phoenix-based environmental services firm. We offer planning, landscape architecture, biological, cultural, paleontological, visual resource, and environmental compliance services. All these services have a GIS-related component. Yeah. Our clients include real estate developers, power companies, mines, government agencies, and municipalities. The bulk of my work is involved with environmental compliance for real estate development and transmission line projects throughout the Southwest. I'm active in managing archaeological surveys, monitoring, and excavation projects, and oversee all GIS-related pieces of these projects, as well as help out with the business development and field work. So here's a few slides of some of the landscapes we work in in Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, California, and most recently in Utah. What I find most rewarding about my work is I get to work with people that I've known for a long time and consider friends and colleagues. Uh, I spent about 10 years after graduate school in the real estate industry and then found myself back in the archaeology world working with uh, our current cultural resources director. And it's been rewarding to work with him because it's, he allows us to go to the field, write reports, and do business development in about uh, 30 33%, 33%, and 33% uh, proportion. And it's nice to be able to go to the field, get the business, and write the reports, and then go for more business, um, all the while doing GIS as well. And I, I'll, I'll mention that it's also rewarding that I get to use GIS in every aspect of um, what I do at EPG, uh, from Surprisingly, in business development, we use GIS, whether it be processing KML files or shape files from the client to figure out what we need to do, uh, to pre-work and research before we go out on surveys, um, and then finally reporting and field data collection. So it's been pretty rewarding where one day I'll be out recording a site with a total station doing sub, sub meter, sub centimeter uh, mapping where I could be out in the field helping out on a survey project doing, you know, sub-meter and meter uh, mapping of sites on the ground. Um, we're also in situations in the field, which I love, is, is in disconnected environments where you don't have that wireless signal and you have to adapt to that. And sometimes you're working under rock shelters where your GPS doesn't work, where you don't get a signal. So there's various challenges involved with that as well. So here's an example of us trying to map something with a tablet underneath a rock shelter in New Mexico. And here's an example of uh, using an iPhone to record a historic artifact. I think it's a knife blade. Um, we also do good old fashioned map research. If you want to do GIS that as, a, as a topic, I think you think of it, the, the best advice I ever got was from an ASU professor who's long since retired, uh, who saw that I was doing GIS and said, Ryan, the GIS is a tool in, in, in a large array of tools, and you need to think about it as such. So I would suggest that you focus on a topic that you like, whether it be biology, archaeology, or anthropology, and use GIS to help solve those problems. Um, I, I find that GIS is a great tool and it opens a lot of doors, but you have to have a topic like archeology span or anthropology to attach it to. I think the second uh, advice I'd have is, you, it really uh, helps understand in archeology span where your culture areas are, and that's in the, where they were in the past, and the material culture that goes with that culture, as well as the present lay of the land as far as uh, cultural affiliations go. 
It also helps immensely to understand um, basic geodesy and understand what township sections range, township range sections are, and your topo maps and the location of um, various uh, government jurisdictions um, because it requires different compliance for each type of jurisdiction. Plus, if you're on survey, it really helps to know your jurisdiction, especially if you're going to the private land and rural areas. Um, further, I think it's really important to know your geology and your, your soils, especially when you're trying to determine if there's buried deposits, like to do further archeology span for compliance projects. And I think that um, knowing how all these things change through time. So kind of you have this spatial thinking, but you should also think spatio-temporally. So thinking of time and space. So I think that would be the best advice um, I could give also is thinking of GIS as a tool in the tool set, thinking spatially and uh, spatio-temporally, but also thinking of GIS as a subset of data visualization. And I think there's a lot of talk and a lot of ink spilled on uh, data visualization out there and data science. And GIS is just a part of that. Um, I think beyond the Esri suite of, of products, there's other products like Tableau and BI um, software that's taken data visualization uh, really far. And I think we could do more of that in archeology. span And I think that Esri and, and some of the other products out there are, are kind of on their way to catching up, uh, but just know that there's a whole body of knowledge out there uh, dedicated to data visualization, data science and analytics, whatever the, the, the term du jour is. But that, I would say think about that in the broader context and solving your problems and let your problems drive the data. So that's my advice and thank you for your time. And just wanted to end with a few slides. One thing I really like about GIS is that we still use paper maps to do our research. We find great things on our projects and, and we are stewards of those resources we find, uh, whether they're sites or artifacts on the ground. Um, we do use a suite of Esri products. We use Art Collector in the field for submeter if we can't can get it and we use tdc 100s for tremble and GOXTs for submeter mapping of sites uh, most of the time then we'll use other apps like peak view on our phones to figure out what peaks are there because sometimes it's significant to know what what those peaks are because some of them might have cultural meaning and we integrate all our uh, our field data into arcgis collector which goes into our arcgis server which goes back out to our um, apps that we develop to help summarize the data. And we're usually working in more than one place, so it's nice to have it summarized as we go through uh, our days to manage those projects. So again, you know, great landscapes. Yes, there's power lines there, but we're helping place those power lines and permit those power lines so they're, they're complying with the National Environmental Protection Act and that they're in the best place visually so they're not skylining against the landscape and ruining some of these views. So you can see some of the examples of these great landscapes um, all over the Southwest. So that's what I have. And if you have any questions that you can email me below at rarp at epgllc.co. And I thank you for your time.